Coming up in today's video, I'll take you through how I paint a realistic P-Dot pattern on my 28mm Warlord Games bolt action figures. This technique can be accomplished by any painter and it will make your miniature stand out on the tabletop. Let me know below if you'll be using this tutorial for your wargaming miniatures. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, I want to thank Paul from Warlord Games. This video wouldn't have been made possible without the generous donation that he made to the channel by sending me these models. So to start off with, when we're painting P-Dot, we need to find some paint. I use the AK 3G range and it's the P-Dot set. Very good. I know some people have said that they're not too keen on AK paints, but they haven't moved to the new third generation. I would really recommend them. Um, I've find them really good they're pretty equivalent when in terms of consistency with like Vallejo okay so to start off with we're gonna base uh, the P-Dot so we use chocolate brown for that um, and you can obviously just go as hard as you want here and just put it on AK paints are a little bit more thin down than Vallejo um, so you may need two coats I believe the darker colors you don't really need two coats um, uh, but it's always good practice to put a second coat down just so that color does come through now I initially primed this color using Tamiya surface primer light gray um, and the paintbrush I'm using is a rosemary and co series 33 in the sizes 2 slash 0 so it's it's quite a small brush um, you could use a thicker brush for this uh, and a bigger brush but I've already painted the rest of the model so I've cheated a little bit and I want precision now to wash those trousers I use Citadel Nor oil and they're thinner and I use an odd palette here you see it's a really odd palette and I get a couple of drops of an old brush so I do like I don't know three or four drops um, and then using the same brush without having to clean it I do the same thing probably about four or five so it's normally about a one to one ratio but maybe I add a couple more drops of black in there mix it up obviously you can make as much or as little as you need I'm only painting one set of trousers so I really don't need much of this wash and the process is really easy you just wash as much of that as you can on um, try not to let any of it pull so if you put it on and you look and you go well there's a few areas where there's a big pool of that black just dry off your brush um, and just soak it up that way you're not going to have a really dark area when the rest of it's just been lightly washed so for the highlight we use chocolate brown so I say highlight it's more of a layer than a highlight uh, making sure that I'm capturing the creases as I always do in all my other videos capturing the creases um, and building that color back up until we reach the final highlight. So this is where the 2 slash 0 uh, Rosemary and Crow brush really comes into its own. Um, it's got a really sharp point uh, and it works really well. Uh, I've had this brush for months now and it's still going really really well so I'd highly recommend it especially for painting P-Dot. All right, and now for the final highlight, we use cork. So this is obviously just highlighting. So we're just hitting the creases um, and any of the folds and adding just a bit more definition to specific areas. So maybe where the knee is sort of protruding out a little bit and any other lines in the trousers that might be a bit more on show um, or a bit more worn. Um, but yeah, you don't need to go mad here. You could even dry brush this if you wanted to. If you're not into the painting part, dry brushing is a really good way of doing uh, subtle highlighting, but you don't have the control that you would do with a paintbrush. So now comes the fun part. So to start off with, we use dark green and we start with blobs. So only a few, as you can see in the picture, there's only a few of these dark green blobs. Um, so you're just painting them on and adding them quite spaced out as well. And then we add the dots. So on P-Dot, this is from the Imperial War Museum, this picture as well. P-Dot has clusters of the same color and then some random dots 
in between. So if we want a realistic P dot, which is what I'm trying to go for here, uh, I'm adding the clusters of the dark green and then I'm adding some random dots around the trousers. So now we do the exact same thing with the orange tan. Um, the reference photo that I was using didn't have as many of these like paler or orangey um, blobs. So just a couple spread around again and not too thick. So just light little blobs. And now we hit the dot. So again, you can see on this picture, there's clusters of that same color. So we add the cluster in there. And then exactly the same as what we did with the green, we then add dots just randomly around outside of those clusters. So add a big cluster of that, that color and then just spread those dots around nicely. This brush really does work great for this. You just add little dots here and there and the brush really does the work for you. And then for the light green, this isn't as much in clusters so you're looking more at painting random dots there's a few dots that would be uh, close to one another as shown in this picture here so small clusters but not big like we've just been painting so just do little clusters and then obviously some random ones around as well now don't forget as well that some of those um, blobs that we put down also have different colors inside of them. So you look at your reference picture just to get those right as well. Okay, so I've just set it. So we use the original color, the base color, so chocolate brown, and we put those within that orange color, or orange tan, and just a few little dots in them. Uh, from that picture, they weren't in the green, so I left them out. And then you should get something that looks similar to that. Really straightforward. I think that whole process took me about 30 minutes. That, I mean, it is trousers, so it's, it's easy, but yeah, 30 minutes. So this next step is optional. You really don't have to do this, uh, but I used my AK Interactive Uniform Definition filter. Now, I don't think you can actually purchase that anymore. I believe it's out of production, but you can use any brown filter here. So I used a brown filter and I was just going in the creases just to darken them up a little bit more. And that's all this filter will do. It will tan um, certain areas with a brown, which is really good for just fading those creases uh, inside of those creases where it would be darker. So that's why filter's good. You can use the original base color and make that into a filter if you wanted to, um, but yeah if you've got the AK range it's really good and then there we go so that's how you paint PDOT this was a very quick video I didn't want to make it into a big 28 mil painting tutorial from start to finish just because they're always a very long video and I know the majority of you are just here to see PDOT so this is how I paint my PDOT you can go really cartoony make it a little bit more unrealistic but I try to make it as realistic as possible uh, with my skill set which isn't the best uh, especially with 28 mil but i think it's come out really nicely so let me know below if you found this video useful will you be using this tutorial i've got more of these plans so i'll be doing more uniform based videos i've got a full video on how i paint a uh, fulsham jaeger sniper so all the equipment and that is all exactly the same um, so you can go and watch that and you can see how i paint the equipment the flesh etc uh, but yeah, these videos will be more focused on the uniform side of things unless uh, they are a completely different type of nation or nationality or if they've got different webbing, etc. But yeah, other than that, please like and subscribe if you're new here. And if you're not and you're an existing watcher, thank you very much for your support and I will catch you guys at the next one. Thanks.